Hey everyone, Ryan here. I figured I would keep the good times rolling with some more Mass Effect discussion. Playing Mass Effect again and seeing it being discussed, relevant again, has been a real treat for me. I'm so happy that everyone seems to be enjoying it, and if you're opting out and aren't playing it, that's okay too. You're just as welcome to be here as everyone else, of course, and I won't hold it against you. At least not too much. Of course, consider subscribing if you end up liking the content. In the spirit of celebrating all that is Mass Effect on this channel, I wanted to talk about a piece of lore you may have missed at some point in Mass Effect 1 that I've always been fascinated by to this day the trinket. Do be aware that this video will spoil some lore and story for the trilogy, so if you want to avoid it, as it's your first time playing the series, I recommend coming back when you're done. The trinket is given to you by the Asari consort after you promptly smash. I'm kidding, of course, you, you don't have to smash. It's just really funny that, like, she offers you some advice and Shepard's just kind of like, uh, is that it? And she's like, come here. <laughs> uh, it's just always been funny to me. Tough as the scales on any Turian, unyielding. A wall between you and everyone else. Uh, thanks, I guess. Close your eyes and relax, Commander. She tells you she has no idea what the trinket is or what it does, but senses that it's time to pass it on. At the time you get this trinket, you don't know what it does, nor is there any indication of what it does or what it is, no quest for it, and you don't have the option to follow up with the consort on where you can inquire about it further. It's strange too considering you have a scientist in your crew who studies ancient artifacts and you can't even ask her about it. Some scientist you are, Liara. All joking aside, it appears at first glance that it's simply a red herring. The trinket doesn't show up at all in your inventory, and there's no mention of it beyond the consort giving it to you. Years ago, this perplexed me to no end, and it seemed strange to be given an item you could do nothing with. It wasn't until years later upon many replays of the first game in preparation for Mass Effect 2 and then for Mass Effect 3 that I discovered that there was a purpose to it after all. It's a striking piece of lore I think most people will miss. In your travels, if you end up doing the various side quests in the game, you will end up in the Attican Beta Cluster, in the Hercules system. You're likely going to be looking for some space monkeys that stole a data module. If you go off to the left hand corner of the screen, you'll see an anomaly of sorts. Approaching it, you'll begin to see what looks like a sphere in the middle of the structure. If you go and interact with the sphere, you acquire a Prothean data disk, which is a part of a collection series of side quests that are absolutely terrible in Mass Effect 1 and I don't recommend doing them, but you can also interact with the sphere again and a long text prompt opens up that describes how Shepard inserts the trinket into a small slot in the bottom of the sphere. I'm going to read out the whole text prompt and it is quite long, so check the timestamps in the video if you want to skip ahead or you want to read it for yourself. I will also put it in the description so that way you can read it for yourself if you like. Examining the strange Prothean artifact reveals a small irregular slot on the underside of the surface. Remembering the strange trinket you received from the Asari consort on the Citadel, you pull it out and place it into the slot. The ball explodes in a brilliant flash of white light, momentarily blinding and disorienting you. Slowly, your senses return as you wake from a deep sleep. You are alone in the forest, though you are not far from the caves you shared with the others of your tribe. There is a pain and a small lump at the back of your skull, as if a chip of flint has been forced under the surface of your skin. Leaning on your bone tip spear for support, you rise to your feet. A sound draws your attention upwards, where a strange creature hovers high above you. It is unlike the birds you hunt by the lake's edge. It has no head and no wings, yet somehow it flies. It is a beast of shining silver, hanging motionless in the sky like a cloud. You sense that it is watching you studying you. Raising a hairy fist, you shake your spear at it in anger, and the creature rises up quickly until it disappears from view. With a satisfied grunt, you make your way back to your caves and the rest of the tribe. You fall into the familiar patterns of life, the hunt for food, the struggle to claim and keep a mate, the battles against other tribes that would claim your territory. Days roll into nights and back into days. Each time you rise from sleep, there is a sensation that you are not alone, that some other is with you, sharing all you see, hear, and feel. At these times, your hand goes to the strange lump at the back of your skull and you remember the silver creature in the sky. The air grows colder, winter falls. You must range farther for food, clutching the furs tight against you to ward off the chill. It is when one of these long hunts that the strange bird returns. You hear it before you see it, its call a deafening roar as it descends from above, swooping down on you. A single great eye opens on the underbelly, a glowing red orb. You try to run, but a finger of red light extends from the eye and engulfs you and all goes black again. You wake an instant later to find yourself on Elatania, lying on your back, the Prothean artifact looming above you undamaged and your companions standing over you. They help you to your feet, puzzled. There is a flash of light and you just sort of toppled over, one explains. Are you okay, Shepard? The other asks. You don't answer right away, wondering at the implications of what you have seen. 
the memories of a Crow Magdon hunter captured by an implanted Prothean data recorder. How long did they study the primitive humans, observing them and analyzing the results at their base on Mars, and what, if anything, did they learn from us? I'm fine, you reply, realizing this is a mystery you'll probably never solve. Forget about it. Now what does this all mean? If you have played the series before, then you know where this is going. You find out from Javik in Mass Effect 3, who is the Prothean squad mate you get in Mass Effect 3's From Ashes DLC that is now bundled in the Legendary Edition together with the other games, that the Protheans were observing primitive life forms, such as Asari, Quarians, Solarians, Hanar, Turians, and of course, humans. So knowing that, this vision you experience with the Trinket on Elatania and the Sphere is essentially foreshadowing this information that you get later in the series. It's heavily implied throughout this vision that the Hunter has a piece of what feels like flint in the back of their skull. So knowing that, this vision you experience with the Trinket on Elatania and the Sphere is essentially foreshadowing this information you later learn in the series. It's heavily implied through this vision that primitive humans were observed by the Protheans. Several times it's stated in this vision that the Hunter has a piece of what feels like a piece of flint in the back of their skull. There is a pain and a lump in the back of your skull as if a chip of flint has been forced under the surface of your skin. And, at these times your hand goes to the strange lump at the back of your skull and you remember the silver creature in the sky. The Protheans would observe primitive species and once they evolved to the point where they were able to comprehend their existence and place in the world, they would have offered them the opportunity to join the Prothean Empire. What is described here is the hunter being aware of the strange presence but not having the knowledge or enough of a strong will or mind to think critically or investigate further or communicate to their tribesmen what they are seeing. Then the strange bird, as it's described in the story, returns and engulfs the hunter. The small story says, it is on one of these long hunts that the strange bird returns. You hear it before you see it. It's call a deafening roar as it descends from above, swooping down on you. A single great eye opens on the underbelly, a glowing red orb. You try to run, but a finger of red light extends from the eye and engulfs you, and all goes black again. So the Protheans at times would even abduct some of these species to study them, and even when you speak to Javik in Mass Effect 3, he comments on how he is surprised that the most primitive species of his time ended up ruling the galaxy in this cycle. He comments on how the Solarians were nothing more than lizard people that ate flies. Yummy. And again, nobody mentions this incident from the trinket and the Prothean artifact. We know from various reports of what is flagged and what isn't, and I can even say myself, I've seen the flags when I've done some various save editing with my games in the past, that if you're importing a save into Mass Effect 2, that this incident is flagged, but it doesn't really have an effect on 2 or 3, so in a sense it does end up being a red herring after all, but it's an incredible piece of foreshadowing that I think most people will miss. Here you have an incredible piece of lore that is hidden away deep in Mass Effect 1, in an unmarked event, never to be brought up again. It is unclear if Bioware meant this to be anything other than a simple red herring, something that was just meant to be a fun tease of what is to come that most people won't see, or if they wanted it to be something bigger or something else at one point in time, but ended up changing course during development. It's an incredibly missable and deeply fascinating piece of lore, and now that I have the thinking capacity to know and describe and understand these small details peppered throughout the games, I make sure that I visit Elitania every time for just this small, seemingly insignificant piece of lore that implies a great deal of how the Protheans operated and what we will learn from the last surviving member of their race in Mass Effect 3. Folks, that's all we have to discuss here in this video, and I hope it made you think a bit more about the subtle plotting that Bioware placed throughout the trilogy for the Protheans and how it inevitably played out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, feel free to give it a thumbs down. And finally, subscribe if you want to see more. Regardless, thanks for watching if you got this far, and I'll talk to you all soon. I love you all. Maybe.